Yeah. Now, Mr. Mikutama, this is a question I pose to, to the Minister of Mineral Resources. And I'm sorry I've changed camps today because I'm on the other side. Levels, Chief, levels. <laughs> <laughs> why, why are we talking about 30% and 50%? You're the leader of BLF. Whose land is it anyway? You know, why the negotiation? Why do we have to submit and still say 18%, you know, for black ownership? 50% goes to black license holders. Whose land is it anyway in order to structure a, a negotiated settlement? Yeah, but that's an important question. In fact, myself and Zwanele he had a big fight about this. Mm. And Zwanele saying, because BLF says we accept this, we must support the 30%. Of course, we move from 100% because uh, the land belongs to us, the minerals belong to us, and all these were stolen from black people. However, we've say, we're also saying there's been 23 years and we have not made any progress. This is a significant start. And, uh, you know, I must say we are very nervous as we sit here because we believe even these minimums are going to be reversed. So our attitude is to say, just like Tabo is saying and the comrades from the train are saying, we were consulted, the, this charter gave us something we can work with. Our attitude is let us consolidate let us make sure that the 30 percent happens in only 12 months mm. we can ask we are going to escalate these demands after the 30 percent we're going to ask for more but we've got nothing in our hands right now mm. therefore let us get something consolidate show that we can mine show that we can make money show that communities can benefit you know this eight percent we wanted 20 percent as blf but okay it's eight percent now let us make sure that these communities benefit directly from owning and then we're going to certainly go for 100 percent so but let's start from some Somewhere. I beg you also, Mr. Mani and others, let us support the charter because already there is a backlash from very powerful forces, from even the ruling party itself. Mm. If we are not united and we don't disagree so much amongst ourselves on the basis of these percentages, and then we're able then to provide a block to defend the charter, this mining charter must be defended. If we don't do so, we are going to put ourselves again in a position where we have nothing. <laughs> Next 12 months. <clears throat> 30% in our hands. So it's an ongoing struggle. So, Absolutely. Yeah, so Mr. Khadima, how do we know? know? Mr. Khadima, how do we know then that uh, our Minister of Mineral Resources is not going to be under attack from white monopoly capital? Because some people are probably sitting in their homes right now, you know, counting their billions and thinking, you know, these guys are really going to come and whip us. This radical thing is going to, to let the cheese sip from our hands. Are we going to expect the minister to be you know, on, on, on the front page of a Sunday publication? Uh, or what is going to be the reaction from white monopoly capital? There's going to be backlash. There's going to be a pushback. But we must see it for what it really is, that these are greedy profiteers, and therefore they have no interest whatsoever in the well-being of this country. And I'm saying, if the mining shares collapse by 6% today or yesterday, wherever they're trading, I hope that from Monday they can collapse by a further 10%, and by the end of the week they must collapse by 50%. If they collapse by 50%, it gives us a great opportunity to buy value cheap. So I'm saying let those shares collapse to the floor. Because after all, we have people here who have monetized resources that in any case were stolen. Because come 2001, 2002, the pushback they had against Pumzile Mlambo Nguga as a minister then, that she then made some concessions where it allowed the historically entrenched companies to decide which minerals they wanted to keep. And they kept the dripping roast and they gave back to the state to relicense that which was meatless bones. Mm -hmm. So let those shares collapse. And then let us, as South Africans, mobilize capital amongst ourselves to patriotically buy these companies when their shares have hit the floor. And then that way we will achieve transformation much higher than the 30%. The way, so let's is, not be deterred. This is actually an insult to black people. The pushback is an insult. What does this pushback mean? This pushback means that uh, black people should not be part of the ownership to that extent. This is what it means. I mean, an additional only mega 4% has, has created a hoo-ha. Mm. I mean, this is absolutely, absolutely nonsensical, actually, to be arguing about an additional 4%. Because what, what, it, what it means is that 
those that are arguing against this additional 4% are actually saying black people are irresponsible as shareholders. But Mr. Manu, let's then address, let's address the hoo -ha. Because people are, are having concerns. Mining is one of the best performing sectors in the country. People have concern with the RAND dropping by 2%. No, yeah. People have concerns uh, uh, with regards to foreign investment. Are these real concerns no, that no. should be No, no, it's a racist. With? It's a racist posture. Mm. Because what are we talking about here? We're not talking about increasing wages and therefore increasing cost of doing business. No. All we're talking about is who owns the stakes. This is what this is about. It's got absolutely nothing to do with the operations. Absolutely. The black shareholders are also going to invest in, 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 in these operations. It's not like when you have black shareholders, all that money they're going to go, go and buy BMWs. No. They're also going to invest. So the argument here, uh, the argument is quite a racist and a very uh, paternalistic argument that says when you have black shareholders, they're not going to have the same diligence that the white shareholders have. This is what it's about. So what, what we're saying is that let that share, that four percent still stay with white people because they can uh, plow it properly. Once you give it to black people, it's not going to be plowed properly. It's a very racist and paternalistic uh, argument. Mm. We, we want to tap in on the, you see the issue of the rent. You see from a layman's mm. view again. Mm. Well, it's worrying from a community's perspective. When we're exploited by these mines and white monopoly capital, the rent does not drop. It is a concerning issue from our city. But when you put pro-poor policies, you want to put radical economic transformation, practical, you put meaningful policies, the rent drops. Therefore, but I, I have an issue with the people who are opposing the mining chart. I have noticed them, including the media. They are not speaking on the contents of the chart. We want as communities to be challenged on the contents of the chart. Because, look, the minister will be defended by us where we're sitting. Because the content, they should be arguing and saying the content, but they're arguing on consultation and all other issues. Because where we're sitting, take the issue of ownership. On the current situation, they took a person who was an HR person there, they said you own these shares, they bought him a house in town, they pay him 20,000. But the new charter rearranges that. Mm -hmm. The new charter says, out of everything, 1%, you would ownership. pay to your ownership. Mm. You would pay to, to, to your black partners. They go out of the country and negotiate with these big companies with, which owns these yellow machines. They negotiate lesser rates. The 1% that is supposed to be coming towards community development is not coming there. Therefore, we want to be challenged, and we would love that these other media houses challenges the minister on the content of the, of, of the chat. Let's go to it. It speaks about sustainability. When, as I was saying when you, you were coming here, in those mining towns, they are what we call it bobozo, mm. sinkholes. Mm. Uh, and this charter seeks to do away with that. Uh, and, and therefore we're saying, let them go to the issue challenging the contents of the chart. Mm. And that's where we are. But what is important also is to, um, uh, and, and what baffles us is the industry does not understand how unsustainable the current trajectory is. Because currently in Steelport, uh, communities are, are, um, are tipping uh, 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 trucks to say where is this mineral going, who is it benefiting. Mm -hmm. Transformation is a business imperative mm -hmm. and also it means that inclusive transformation um, um, uh, participation which includes workers and community is a definite must. Now from where we are sitting as employees we find it very strange that um, where employees, 15,000 employees should own 2% now the, tra the, the charter is coming with a minimum of 8%. And, and also, we should be very careful in how we are limited to the 30%, which is a minimum. Mm. That 30% must be clear, it's a minimum. The mineral wealth of this country belongs to South Africans, and thus that 30% can never be 